Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Objective Leader Sports Impression. I'm John Mauricio. This afternoon, I have one very wonderful guest from the state of Wisconsin, way, way, way up north from Wisconsin. And he's the author of the book, and his name is no other than Brent Crane. Welcome to our show, Brent. Thank you for having me. Hey, it took you how, how long to get here? Six hour drive. Six hour drive and uh, no construction? No, just traffic in Chicago. <laughs> just traffic in Chicago. But uh, you're the author of the book, New Friends Request. You have a new Why? friend request. Why? What? Um, what? You, just like a Facebook. New yeah. Friends Request. Yeah. Were you in Facebook? Yes, I was. And I, and I still am. I, do, I still do a daily post. Uh-huh. And, and uh, now that you are uh, an author of the book, what, what do you post mostly? Um, it, actually, it's still a lot of the same. I started uh, probably four or five years ago. Uh, actually, before that, I was on Facebook. I didn't, uh, um, didn't post positive messages. I posted the same as everybody else, and I was reading what everybody else was. And, and I, so I, I had, dur during Lent, I had given up Facebook. And uh, uh, I felt God telling me that, you know, you, you, can, you can probably do something positive on Facebook. And so then that's kind of where it started. Uh -huh. And it took a little while to get a more refined post like, they're, like they are now. What, what changed you from the ordinary Facebook uh, enthusiast to... I, I, it was Lent. I, you know, uh, I've had some, some pretty amazing things happen by giving up things at Lent. And, uh, and it's not always giving up, it's sometimes it's doing things differently. And uh, so then when I went back onto Facebook after Lent was over with, I, uh, I uh, started realizing that there was something different that could happen. And, and Facebook happens to be one of those things that um, it gets to everybody, not just you know one denomination or another denomination or believers or non-believers, it reaches everybody. Wow, and, and you started writing the book. You have a new press request. Uh, what is this book all about? Um, what I did is I took uh, my postings uh, on Facebook from the year 2015, and I still do it. I still had uh, 2016, and I'm still doing it to the, today. But it took all those postings um, and compiled them into a book. And uh, what, what's the, me the benefit that the readers could get from from all those postings. Uh, I would say it's it's probably mostly it's life lessons. There's a lot of life lessons. I I, I try to ask people questions, uh, sometimes relating to God, sometimes not relating to God, but ultimately it all ends up in a in prayer uh, at the end and in uh, reference to a scripture that that caused me to reflect on this. And you you know, prayers somehow make things easier for you. If you are suffering from any affliction or difficulty in life, a little prayer will, like a tension reliever type thing. Oh yeah. You know, uh, is that in your book? Huh? Oh yeah, there's, there's a lot about prayer. There's a lot about um, how prayer life in general helps us to, to be stronger. Uh, like you and I were talking a little bit beforehand was um, how, you know, it, it kind of gives you guidance. It gives you hope. Um, yeah. it's, it's, like, it's like a parent. Where we, uh, um, when we have a, a, a parent that we're close to, um, they help to make our life easier because they can help us understand things. And God is like that when we pray. Well, in Facebook, you have all kinds of friends. You know, Facebook friends that are sometimes atheists, sometimes, you know, this non believer. How do you talk to the non believer? Um, it, it's interesting because a lot of times, even the non believer will, will at least acknowledge what you're saying as being possibly factual, but, but some of them don't believe that there's actually a God. So what I try to do is I try to help them to understand that if there is no God, then how do we get to where we're at? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's very easy to explain the existence of God, but uh, again, we talk about the elevators and things yeah. like that. Uh, maybe Maybe... Some of them are only up to ten floor. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I really liked your uh, your your share, what you shared with me was was you know we try to understand God and it's kind of like 
you know, if you were in a, a 15 story building and we only go up to the 10th floor and there's the 11th, the 12th, the 13th and the 14th and the 15th floor that we've never and been beyond, on to, we don't and beyond know. that we don't understand because we've never been to that floor. And I, I like that. I really like that. Well, you know, uh, uh, how do you relate, you know, with, with kids, especially with kids, young, young people? Because this is not only for old people, but this is for everybody. Yep. Um, it, well, I actually, I, I teach, I've been teaching catechism for 25 years, so I, um, you kind of have a, a little bit of understanding of where they're at and the difficulties they have. And I think because I, I kind of struggled in that my, my preteen years, um, and it was with these type of things, trying to understand life in general and, and what's my purpose. And I think uh, by, by sometimes opening those things up to the, to the kids to, to make them start to think, and it, it kind of covers the people that are on a, a higher level, but also the people that are on a lower level because they, they start to, to, to question their own beliefs. And I try to eventually bring them back around to you know, where God is in their life. You know, sometimes, you know, teaching kids, uh, you will probably have a different degree of teaching. Uh, a single mother raising their kids. Uh, or uh, uh, the whole family with, you know, dysfunction, no family dysfunction. It's easier to teach than the one with just... Yeah, I have to agree. I, I, I think that sometimes because I have a lot of friends that are, like I said, that some are married, some are single parents and raising, yeah, it, raising it, kids. It's, yes. And they have difficulties and, they, and those difficulties, are, they're real. They're, they're, and sometimes the best hope for them is, hey, I'll pray for you. Yeah. And, and it's not praying for them as a, as a um, feel sorry for them. But it's a praying for them so to help to make them stronger. And sometimes just that reassurance of that, that prayer and knowing somebody else is praying for you uh, gives you strength. You're teaching catechism now, right? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> from, from Ohio to Wisconsin, that changed your life. <laughs> uh, it's interesting because I, I moved from Ohio uh, when I was 14 years old. Uh, my, my parents had... Uh, gotten a divorce when I was younger, and I had the opportunity to move up to Wisconsin to live with my dad. And uh, um, I went from being somebody who really didn't have any direction mm -hmm. to a 14 year old that still didn't really have direction. Yeah. But I got a, a new lease on life. I was like, I can start all over, and I did. I, I, I kind of changed my life, and and you know, my I went, met my wife when I was 14 years old. Um, and we never we never dated during high school, but we were those high school mm -hmm. uh, people that knew each other. Uh -huh. And within a year after we were out of school, we were married. <laughs> you, you know, being being a fourteen years old in Wisconsin, you found God. Um, I would say I probably really didn't find God. Well, well, God, well, God, well, God knew age? God knew where I was at. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I I I probably would say. My late twenties, uh, mid to late twenties. My wife. Did my you wife feel that? Did you? The, did you feel the? Uh, I always the, had a, a sense, yeah, uh -huh. uh, that that God was there, but I just didn't understand it. You know, I, I went through just like a lot of teenagers do, where you go through that that time in your life where um, you go on. Well, is there really a God? What's my purpose? Where where am I at? And I I had those same struggles myself. Um, and it's funny because when you get older. And, and I always tell people that once you have kids, you start to realize what it would be like to, who, who would you die for? Uh -huh. um, you know, we always say that, well, I love my, my family members enough, but when you have your own children, that's when you understand that, who would I die for? Yeah. Um, and, and that, when you start to realize you want to do the best things for your kids, you start to understand God more because God wants to do that for us. He wants mm -hmm. to give us purpose. And so we try to help to un help our kids to understand and have purpose. Okay. Uh, the message that in the book uh, are directed to kids, to adults, or to everybody? It's directed to everybody, uh, whether they're Christian or, or atheist or agnostic. It, it, it makes them think. And, it, and that's what I want them to do is I want them to 
to go out there and not necessarily to convert somebody to believe in God, mm -hmm. but to help them to understand that the people that do believe in God have purpose and have a, have a reason for understanding them and to help them to know God better. You are not too far from Champion, Wisconsin. And um, the miracle of 1871 happened there at Champion when, when Sister Adele Joseph Breeze yeah. prayed to the Holy Mother to save the convent and the school. And he, she saw the appearance, the, the apparition of the Holy Mother to, and save the, the school. These people. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that died during that fire. At the same time, Chicago was also burning mm -hmm. at that time, and uh, it's very, very hot wind, uh, summer days, wind blowing and things like that. And uh, the appearance of Mama Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother, to show, to show uh, Sister Adele Breeze uh, that there is really an existence of God. And this time, the Pope declared champion the National Shrine, yeah. the first one in America. Yeah. So uh, I think Wisconsin is blessed to have a, to have a shrine like that. Yeah, yes they are. And if you are a non-believer, you go and visit the chapel and you will feel it in Champion, Wisconsin. But anyway, uh, let's talk, go back to the book and... Uh, Last message for you. How could where they can they where can they get the book? Uh, you can get the book um, multiple online services: uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Amazon Prime, Westbow Press um, are all the, the the main ones. Um, mm -hmm. But if you go out there and search it, you'll be able to find it. Um, and it's available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. So if you're uh, an ebook reader, you'd prefer to read it on an ebook. You can also get it there. Okay, uh, last word from you to our viewers about the um, I would say that, you know, I ask everybody to take an opportunity and just open it up, uh, read some of the sample readings, and uh, see what, what's out there. Because sometimes there's those, those little messages that we're not looking for, but we find um, because they're, they're relevant to our everyday needs and our everyday life. Um, so there's life lessons and also Christian messages um, to help us to, to be stronger, be better, and to grow. Okay. If you are a non-believer, still you read the books. You'll yes. find something there. Again, this is Joe Mauricio, and thank you very much for sharing thank your you time with us. Thank you again for having us. me. And God bless you. God bless you. God okay. bless you. This is Joe Mauricio saying thank you for sharing your Sunday with us again. Thank Mabuhay. you.